Hello, I'm Pete Cardin of the Marshall School of Business. We're here at IBM Connect 2014, and we're really fortunate to have Mark Burgess here today, an expert in social media marketing. He's a Bloom Focus Marketing, and he's also co-author of the book, The Social Employee. Uh, Mark, do you mind uh, giving us a quick introduction? Sure. Uh, again, Mark Burgess, I'm the president of Blue Focus Marketing. We're a social branding consultancy uh, based in New Jersey. Um, I'm also an adjunct at three very fine universities, Rutgers University, Fairleigh Dickinson University, and Ryder University, and very involved and very active to instill the whole idea of how powerful social is today and, and really make sure that's part of uh, the curriculum that I'm certainly involved with. And I think that's really where we want to start off, is seeing where social media is in the curriculum. And maybe you could share some thoughts about how you're um, including that as part of the curriculum in the schools that you're working at. All right, and I'll start with a really quick example from just two days ago, uh, teaching a, a course at Rutgers Business School in consumer behavior. And I happened to ask the students in the beginning, you know, what are your expectations? Other than the grade you'd like to achieve, what do you want to learn? And to a person, they all said, we're really interested in learning more about social media, which is amazing because it really tells you they need, they have a thirst for that, and there's an opportunity to provide that from a, a curriculum basis. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Well, you're really, your expertise is in the social media marketing field, and maybe you could share some thoughts about where so, what, what, so, what the role of social media is in marketing these days. Right, well I think in terms of marketing, I mean you have the whole shift, uh, what someone had coined, uh, the shift from outbound marketing, where you're just basically being intrusive, putting messages out there, to inbound, which is more about engagement, more, it's the whole notion that the consumer is now in control, that they kind of own the brand. So the brand needs to think differently about how they listen to their market, how they engage with the market, and it's all about engagement. So it's uh, intrusive things don't work as well anymore. Engaging, providing valuable content, more and more marketers are finding that through social media. Um, you can build a more engaged and an interested audience. And I'm thinking of statistics like such as 12% of people trust advertising, but 78% trust their peers, their network recommendations, word of mouth. So this is the power of social and uh, how that's important to marketers today. Okay. Um, I'm really intrigued by the, the title of your book, Social Employee, mm. and I've heard some people suggest this. I think you're really the first mm. um, set of authors to mm. have an entire mm. book that focuses on that concept. Could you share a little bit about what a social employee is and right. how, how a social employee brings value to the business? Sure, well a social employee, basically someone who's been trained and uh, is motivated around their brand. So if you think about it from a company's perspective, we like to talk about, it's called branding from the inside out. Mm -hmm. That if you can't trust your employee to represent your brand, kind of, you know, who can you trust? Right. So with the right motivation, the right training, uh, we talk about in the book a social executive who basically is leading and guiding and helping to train and get their, their employees focused on what the goals are of the organization, the mission, the values, and where they're trying to go. And once the audience, as in the employees, truly understand that, they need, they need to be you know, trained and you develop things called a social media policy. And they are then engaged. So it's kind of the, the, the new millennial. Um, right. Think about you growing up as the digital native with these tools as opposed to the, the uh, digital immigrant that I would fall into, who have adopted the tools and find them working wonderfully. But the book is about then empowering your audience, and all of a sudden you have authentic communications going out. The idea that people don't want to talk to a logo, they want to talk to people. Right. So your employee as the representative of your brand is really very powerful. And you, you mentioned earlier, um, when we were talking earlier, a little bit about blogging. Yes. Um, could you share some thoughts about right. employees blogging and how that brings some benefits to the business? Exactly. I mean, I think part of the goal is having the employee do what they really enjoy doing. Find the comfort zone. Maybe Twitter, maybe Facebook, and maybe blogging, maybe all three. But you basically try to leverage the things that they like to do. And the opportunity in blogging, and I can relate it to, to education, that I think if you're, uh, you know, you're looking ahead from high school on, you want to be developing a blog. You want to get developed part of your own social presence. Right. And you want to kind of get your thoughts down and it becomes something that's very helpful when you get into the interview stage, that you understand the tools, you understand how they work. You may have found a favorite or one or two 
and it's going to help you be more competitive in a world where you need to understand how these tools work and you can have real examples of how they work for you. Um, maybe we could finish off talking a little bit about personal brand and you have a lot of opportunities to talk to all the way from executives down to business students. Right. What are some of the rules of success in terms of developing a personal brand with social? Well, I think the, the key is to really look at, again, back to kind of the comfort zone. So if I found someone that really did not like to write and you try to force them to write a blog, that's not going to work very well. But on the other hand, they may love to write and it may be a natural. So you go with your own strength. And maybe it's really Twitter. Maybe it's finding and curating content and creating content. Um, maybe it's just other different tools you might want to use. So you find the one you feel best about because it's all about this, your digital footprint. If you ever stop for a moment and kind of Google yourself, and see what comes up, which would be if you're a, uh, you know, um, a, uh, you're in college and you're, you know, you Google yourself and then you're looking to head to the interview, the same thing that probably the employer is going to do, right? So you want to have a presence. So if you have a blog, if you have a LinkedIn page, if you're involved in Twitter, you are going to be that much more marketable. Uh, the company that's going to be interviewing you is going to feel a lot better and you're going to feel great when you get, you know, maybe a new job and, a, and that title might be social community manager or just about, it's interesting to me today, uh, there's so many social related titles. So someone right. coming out of you know, college graduating today just really needs to have kind of a portfolio of these skills. Whether they use them a lot is not as important as they've tried them, they know the value, and maybe they try the one or two that really work well for them. And for the students, do you think this is, applies more to the marketing people or across the board? I think it does across the board. In fact, one of the points that we made in, in our book, The Social Employee, is that it's almost as if thinking that everyone in the company is in marketing today. So whether you're in HR or IT, product development, or wherever you are, the, you represent your brand. So it's the, the voice of your brand. So then, so the, the distinction of your department kind of goes away and you kind of knock down the silos and it's all about representing your brand. Okay. Well, we appreciate your time today and providing insights, and we thank you for joining us. Again, this is Mark Burgess, and we appreciate your time. Take thank care. You. Thank you.